Okay, hi everyone. My name is Igor and I am a member of the Galaxy Game Dev team in Ukraine. Galaxy Game Dev is a team of engineers from different countries all over the globe. We help our partners optimize their games for mobile devices through use of best tools and practices, promoting use of new technologies such as Vulkan. Vulkan is next generation low level graphics API with explicit control and minimal CPU overhead. And it is already available in Unity and UEFO engines. Today, we want to share with you best practices of using Vulkan in mobile games. So let's begin. As you may know, Vulkan is handle based rather than state based. This means that all states are stored in specific objects. Most of them are immutable, which is very good for caching. Here are the recommended candidates. We strongly suggest that you implement caches for these objects. This will save CPU time and memory resources. I will cover the most important items in the next slides. But before I begin, I want to give you the advice. Generate Vulkan objects IDs for use in caching. According to Vulkan specifications, different object types may share the same handles. Here you can see that memory buffer and image all have the same value. But what is more important is that handles may be reused after object destruction. Here buffer 13 was destroyed and then another new buffer was created with the same handle. So if you use handles for caching, you need to be very careful and remove all dead entries. Additionally, this dead object tracking logic may have such CPU overhead, so it will make the cache inefficient. It is much safer to assign unique IDs for each created object. We recommend to implement this by declaring a class that contains both. Unlike with handles when using IDs, dead entries cause no harm and don't need to be tracked and removed individually. And instead, you can use a more efficient garbage collection logic. Avoid using some sort of global map that convert handles to IDs. Uh, this will add significant CPU overhead and still will not work with dead handles because uh, they also need to be removed from this map. Now let's talk about Vulkan pipelines. <coughs> Pipeline is a complex object that describes how primitives should be rendered, <coughs> including shaders. However, creating a pipeline object is very expensive. <coughs> so to improve their performance, you need to create and use the pipeline cache. But just using an empty cache is not enough because it doesn't work for the first pipelines. When application runs and uses the pipeline cache, it generates new cache data, gets this data and stored in the persistent storage. Because this action requires I.O. operations, it is better to do this in Android activity on post callback to avoid stuttering. Finally, add the application startup, load this data from the storage, and use it to create the cache. By performing this cycle, you'll always have optimal pipeline cache performance. Let's take a look at the performance impact of using the pipeline cache in the Fortnite mobile game. To reduce gameplay hitching, the game creates a lot of pipelines at loading. So I have measured the performance of each pipeline creation at this stage in different scenarios. Let's compare the performance of using empty cache orange and no cache at all red. As you can see, empty cache has some performance improvement. It is because Vulkan pipeline cache may work even for unique pipelines with a partial data match. In other words, pipeline cache doesn't require full pipeline state match for a cache hit. Now let's take a look at the loaded cache performance. And as expected, performance improved is significant because all pipeline data was already in the cache. As was shown previously, Creating a lot of unique pipelines with empty cache takes a long time. To inform the user about that, Fortnite show the optimizing content message. We started to investigate this problem and found that the game engine used little cause for the pipeline compilation. 
So to improve that, we change the affinity mask to all cores. This unlocks the high performance cores and greatly improves the optimizing content phase. And on the Samsung Galaxy S8, performance increased by more than two times. Therefore, it is very important not to use little cores for the initial pipeline completion. That's all with pipelines. Now, briefly about memory. Allocate Vulkan memory in large chunks and then do sub-allocations. Prefer single buffer per each allocation and then use offset mechanism to subdivide it into virtual resource buffers. Share large allocation between multiple images. Doing this will improve cache efficiency and won't exceed the allocation limit. In most applications, it is often required to pass new uniform data for each draw call. To do this, we recommend that you allocate a separate large buffer to use it as a ring buffer. And assign fans for each frame to track when GPU is done using the buffer's memory. Here on the picture, frame 42 is currently writing to the ring buffer. Frames 40 and 41 are still using their buffer because fences are not signaled. But frame 39 is already finished on GPU and fence is signaled, so this memory may be reclaimed once free space of the buffer is runs out. But if there is no more space, just replace it by a bigger one or create it large enough to always have a free space. In Vulkan, you need to use a descriptor set object to pass resources to shaders. However, updating descriptor sets for each draw call may be very expensive. It is better to implement the descriptor set cache and reuse already updated descriptor sets. With efficient implementation, there will be only few updates per frame on average. But do not forget to use generated IDs instead of handles because this is the most common source of problems. Also, make sure to optimize your implementation so it is more efficient than a simple update each draw. Actually, such cases really happened in our practice. There are two types of descriptors for uniform buffers, normal and dynamic. With normal uniform buffers, two specified set into the same buffer you need new descriptor set for each draw call. But with dynamic uniform buffers, you may use single descriptor set for multiple draw calls. Final offset is calculated at the sum of the base offset inside the descriptor set and dynamic offsets in the bind commands. Dynamic uniform buffers is the first thing that you should implement before moving to the descriptor set cache. Otherwise, the hit rate will be so bad that almost every cache access will be a cache miss. That's all from me for today. Thank you all for your attention. Rest of the presentation will cover my colleague from China, Yao Wei. Uh, thank you, Igor. Uh, hello, I'm Yao Wei from GiveDamp China. And today I want to talk about how to reduce the work -in uh, command callings and also the GPU optimizations. First, let's talk about the skip, vertex, and the index buffer bindings. So the bounding state usually contains three parts, buffer object, buffer offset, and also the buffer stride. So we can catch these status. If the status not changed, we can just uh, skip the unnecessary bindings. But we need to be careful if we only skip the vertex buffer boundings or just the index buffer boundings, then we may face dummy bounding. And as we know, we can pass the offset information in both bound command and also draw command, but we cannot ignore the uh, offset information for buffer. That means if only the offset is different, we still cannot skip the boundings. So here we can see these three cases. The first two only skip the index buffer bounding and all 
vertex buffer bounding, and the case three, ignore the offset information during bounding, and they skip this, and they want to pass the offset information during draw call. But all of these cases are dangerous, may easily cause the rendering issues, because you will face dummy bounding state. Now let's talk about more about GPU optimizations. First is the pipeline barrier. Developers can define the GPU to GPU uh, synchronization points with pipeline stages in pipeline barrier. So we need to use proper pipeline stage if we want to get maximum performance. So here is an example. Uh, it uses the pipeline barrier to change a image layout to readable. So you can see with these pipeline stages, this uh, previous fragment shader need to be completed, um, need to be complete, and the next vertex shader need to wait this fragment job. This will waste the GPU time. But if we change the pipeline stage to proper one, we can see we remove this waiting. So let's see the performance result. After changing the pipeline stage, you can see we removed the pipeline bubbles. And also, we can see the GPU time reduced more than three milliseconds. So best practice to use this pipeline stage is use light and the proper stage if possible, and make sure the parallel processing of vertex and fragment job. So that's all for the pipeline optimizations. Let's see the render pass. First is to remove the empty render pass. So the empty render pass means the render pass without any draw calls. So this may happen when some engine triggered their clear command. And because the render pass switching is quite a heavy operation, so better we remove all the empty render passes. So our suggestion is to delay this render pass. Uh, and if there's no draw call coming and uh, also the render target is not changed, we just uh, never start a new render pass. So this can reduce and have no empty render pass. Except the empty render pass, uh, in performance perspective of view, we also need to use as little render pass as we can. First, we can set up a key for the render pass, uh, for reusing the render pass objects. And the key con contains all the attachment information and all the subpass information. Second, we can also merge the render targets to avoid the unnecessary render pass logic. Uh, here is two examples from our new engine. So you can see we merge deco render targets particle and the translucent render target together, and so does the time map and the state render target. And this reduces the three render passes in each joker, uh, in each frame. Yeah. And for the render pass, we need to care about the load operation and also the star operation. So we better use don't care to have the best performance we can set them in wiki attachment descriptions. Uh, also, uh, as we showed here, to use don't care, uh, we can get less GPU counters, but should be careful. Sometimes using don't care may cause some dirty region issues. So we need to make sure current attachment really don't need previous rendering result, and also current frame is the full screen rendering. If not, then we better use clear. So now let's see the clear operation. So by using this operation, uh, what we do, we can don't need to call a clear command if the render target will not be changed inside the render pass. So here we can see an example. By using the clear operation, 
we can remove this clear command for depth. And also, this can both reduce the CPU callings and also for GPU job. And another important point in render pass is the subpass. So by using subpass, we can read from attachment as input attachment. And also, we can write to attachment, perform the mounting sample resolve. So let, let's see how the subpass can optimize the performance. So here shows an example, a traditional way for deferred shading. So in this case, we're using two render passes. The first one writing to the gbuffer and store the information to textures. And the second render pass read from these textures and do the shading. But if we're using subpass, we only need one single render pass. And we don't need to store the textures because here we can use input, input attachment to avoid the store, and also we can skip the sampling. So let's say the performance result. You can see after using subpass, the performance gets eight times faster, and also the GPU is 14% lower. This is really amazing, but it's not magic. This is because we are using input attachment instead of textures. And we also removed the load and store operation between the render passes and also reduce the memory bandwidth. OK, we come to the end of today's session. So you can see with Worken, we can explicitly control our CPU and the GPU. And there are various ways to reduce the G CPU cost and also can power your GPU. So this is working. The next generation graphics API. And we hope, looking forward, you join. Thank you. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact our email account. And also, you can come to our booth and code lab area to have further discussions. And we still have a bunch of sessions about the gaming support in SDC 19. And welcome to join any of them. And now here comes the lucky draw time. So it's time to win your Aurora Black Canadian Note 10 device. On one. Oh. So the winner is uh, number 38. Who has 38? Oh, congratulations. congratulations. <laughs> Thank you all.